Hey, it's Radko Delorco here and I'm really glad you made it to this MTNA lecture on how to create authentic performances on modern pianos. Good afternoon everybody. My name is Rose Grace and I'm happy to welcome you here on behalf of the uh, 2018 National Conference as well as the Florida chapter um, at SMTA here. Welcome to Florida and Disney World. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter this afternoon, Professor uh, Ratu Delorco, who is a versatile classical pianist, composer, educator, and writer. Uh, he teaches at the Frankfurt University and is an expert on the history and development of piano. Uh, please help me welcome him uh, for the presentation of creating authentic performances of the modern Tracks and insights of the penguin, and it was a 15 16 which is a 4 4. We have washed too hard. Yes, I play jazz rock music, and I'm very open to new approaches to piano. <laughs> Sorry, don't, don't take that serious. This is a, a very old picture, but this girl, King Yi, is today a very popular piano player in England. And I'm sorry, I'm too dense to understand this game, I'm German. <laughs> Currently, I'm lecturing at Frankfurt Music University. So, let's start work. Um, our instrument families, we have far, four instrument families, the tangential instruments, the um, plug string keyboard instruments, the Viennese for the pianos, and the English for the pianos. So, and our next guest is the clavichord. The clavichord starts about 1400, 1500. And it is, is yeah, it has a kind of, key, uh, of touch dynamics. It's not very loud, so your neighbors will love it. Mm -hmm. And it offers quiver and portamento as aftertouch, what we can do 250 years later. So, we have here a clavichord after Silverman with an inverted keyboard. What does this mean? Ivory is expensive, evenly not. So, the upper keys are from ivory, and the lower keys, which are bigger, larger, larger uh, they are from ebony. It's cheap. So this is an economy model, and in a home where you have not much candlelight, because candlelight is expensive, you get a better orientation of the white upper keys. That's the reason. So the play characteristics are: we have restricted dynamics, and uh, which are compensated 
so rich a goji, but then you have to bend the tempo to be expressive. Free portamento and the lowest keys max. It means I'm playing in key contact, so I have nearly no finger edge. Why? I'm producing the song with my finger. This is a tangent, but it's not an action, it's a lever only. And being in, the, in contact with the string, I can produce quiver and even portamento. This was Bach's favorite instrument. So, a big part of the Weltkampf Klavier has been written on such an instrument. Listen to the E flat minor prelude. Respect the Baroque rules. And this heartbeat tempo, which is a slow heartbeat tempo, will be will work for every Baroque music. We, we, let me take this or click. Works. Or um, in all Baroque music. Heartbeat tempo and you are good. No sing fast, slow, no, it's heartbeat te tempo. Our spinet is belonging to the tangent, to the plucked string keyboard. Plucked string? Yeah. Plucked string keyboard instrument. Okay, good. <laughs> so it's so complicated, I'm sorry, I'm so German. Um, it has no key dynamics, but it is, of course, louder. It offers transverse stringing because it's portable. So, this is our spinet, and um, let us see how it works. You see this little white nose going up. This is the plug. The red piece of felt is a damper, and the whole device is called the jack. So this, we have louder, no dynamics, and we have to compensate with the rich agogic. We have an immediate plucking request, and therefore, you need a quite high finger action because you have no escapement. The moment of the pluck is the escapement. Similar, but not the same, is the virginal. Paulus Paulinus of Prague explains in his Tractatus de Musica it is called a virginal because it, like a virgin, it has a gentle and clean voice. I would add, are you sure? <laughs> the strings of a virginal are parallel to the keyboard and it has two bridges deliver, de delivering the sound energy to the sound board. And 
as the string is plucked in the chorus, this looks so good. <laughs> uh, as the string uh, point is located in the middle of the string, it's a dark sound with a strong fundamental. So we have here a spinet from Benedetto Floriani. I have to focus on central registers, and old Italians do not embellish from the upper note, but they embellish from the main note. And trills cannot be fast in this case because the string is pl plucked in the middle of the string. We have compressor dynamic, and I need to work like a speaker. Italian virginal music, the trill speed is, that's it, that's it. You cannot do more, forget it, it will not work. On the modern piano, of course, but it's stupid. Sorry, I'm very direct. So our harpsichord, yes, this is an instrument of the chord, of, obviously, white lower keys, which is ivory, and very much embellished. This is a status symbol. And uh, we have here a harpsichord after Dulcan in 1755. In this case, we have more volume, and we can use terrace dynamics through the option of linked keyboards. And I need a high finger action, of course, in this case. Now, um, see some hands. <laughs> When a harpsichord is described, its choir of strings, also called its disposition, has to be defined. So, an eight foot is an expected pitch, and a four foot is one octave higher. So, if I take this on this Roland baby, by the way, I have here an iPad, which all voicings and influence things, it's wonderful. You should try that out on the booth. It's, it's really nice. It's fun. So if it had the same, please. And now I will switch it to 8 plus 4, linked keyboard.
Oh, okay, thank you. So, on a modern grant, we need heartbeat tempo again. Embellishments respect the same rules as Mr. Bach. We will see that later. And I need flat terrace dynamics. I cannot fuzz around with dynamics. And a gold jig like a speaker. So, we will put this now to the modern co concert grant. With the first, with the native version. The native version means it is not embellished. This is what's written in the score. Later, I will embellish it. So no trills, nothing. sit down and do it, you have to practice improvisation, so a lot of trills, learn a lot of um, cadence, double cadence, moments, and then you can put it in, and this is really fun, because every time I play this piece in a concert, it sounds different, so there's no version identical to the other, so I put in now trills, cadence, this was a cadence, trill, Arpeggio left hand, cadence. So it's a go jig like a speaker, it's not straight. Anapest and dactylus in the left hand. Now I will play a tirata in the left hand. Now. It's fun. So on the modern grand, Baroque musicians are non-legato players, basically non-legato players. And the values have to be sharped down, shaped down to half value according to Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. Half value, this is much. But according to the effect, if it's cantabile or whatever, you can add a little bit of length, or if it has to be danceable, you can shape it down. Exceptions are harmonic fields and returning notes. We will see this later. But interval jumps are short and steps are broad, delivered from poetry. Anapest and dactylus are short, returning notes are legato on beats. Feel free if you want to take some pictures on that because this is, this is quite compressed and I'm fast. So here we have digital phrasing which is steps, it will be three-quarter value. Jumps will be shorter. Even if it's notate, uh, the notation is different, if you play it like this, it sounds immediately like, pia like piano lesson. So if you have harmonic fields, you can connect. will not play non-legato in this case, as you won't play non-legato here. You, you will not play? No. Hope you enjoyed the first part of this lecture held at the MTNA conference in Orlando. See you in a while in part two.